This is one of those builds that you need to add to your arsenal. Why? Well, for starters, your melee punches one-shot literally everything, kill all surrounding enemies with AoE Jolt, make you invisible, and restore your entire health bar. And your other abilities? Grenades and supers? Yeah, you'll be throwing those literally every 5 and 25 seconds. And if you weren't convinced yet, consider the fact that you can create so much heavy ammo that you'll have your friends and clannies blowing up your phone to hop into the fire team on raid night like clockwork. And before we get started, I'm giving away one GDS89 emblem code to a random subscriber that comments down below for every 5,000 likes this video gets. So be sure to like, subscribe, and comment if you haven't already. The Ark Assassin's Cowl Hunter is a pretty complex build, so it's extremely important that you understand each component individually inside and out. Having that understanding will enable you to conceptualize how it all comes together so that you can use it to perfection. It all starts with the Combination Blow Melee ability, which is consumed on melee final blows in exchange for a full refund to your class ability and a stacking melee damage buff, maxing out at three total stacks. This melee ability pairs perfectly with the Gambler's Dodge class ability to fully refund our melee ability when using it near enemies, since it makes it super easy to maintain the persistent positive feedback loop of using our melee to kill enemies and refund our dodge, then use our refunded dodge to regenerate our melee. This synergy makes the Assassin's Cowl Exotic Helmet the perfect armor pairing for this build, complementing your brute force offensive capabilities with a full HP heal and invisibility on powered melee final blows and finishers to give you all the survivability in the world. The duration of your invisibility is also dependent on the tier of enemy you defeat with a powered melee final blow or finisher, with higher tier enemies granting longer durations of invisibility. With these three core components of our kit established, I want to circle back and extrapolate a bit more on one of them, the Combination Blow Melee Ability. It's extremely important to understand that this stacking Combination Blow buff empowers all melees even those used while your melee ability is not fully charged. Because of this, you want to avoid thinking about your melee ability in the traditional sense, where the benefits of it occur exclusively from using it while fully charged, like in the case of most melee abilities, such as the throwing hammer or smoke grenades. Instead, you want to think about this charged melee ability simply as something to be exchanged for an increase and or refresh to your persistent buff, while the actual strength of the melee ability comes from the passive melee damage buff stacks that it provides. The reason it is so important to think of it this way is because it will take you away from that beginner's arc hunter mindset that it is necessary to always have your melee ability up when meleeing enemies. In circumstances where you are faced with many enemies you can one-hit kill and are either fully stacked with combination blow times three or don't have your dodge available to refund your melee, going on a spree of chargeless melee kills with no dodges in between can actually be a lot more effective than dodging in between every punch, as those passively buffed melees will still deal the same damage they would if you had your melee ability fully charged and will still grant invisibility and a full heal from Assassin's Cowl. Remember, however, that this is simply an alternate option and not your primary recommended gameplay loop. You'll definitely want to dodge in between each melee in most circumstances to gain a lot of ability regeneration from our upcoming mods, to constantly refresh your combination stack buff timer, and to gain loads of bonus effects from our first aspect, Lethal Current. This aspect grants us a whole suite of benefits every time we activate our dodge, such as increasing the lunge range of our next melee, applying jolt on our next melee hit, and applying a damaging aftershock 
on our next melee hit. The great thing about this aspect is that it synergizes really well with itself due to the damaging aftershock dealing enough damage to proc the jolt effect to emit arc chains to all nearby targets with just one melee. Additionally, if the target that you apply jolt to dies from the melee that applied jolt, jolt will still proc and damage all nearby enemies. A few important things to note are that while the damaging aftershock is damage buffed from combination blow, final blows with the aftershock will not consume your melee charge and therefore not add to or refresh your combination blow stacks. It will, however, activate the full HP heal and invisibility from Assassin's Cowl. What will not proc Assassin's Cowl is final blows from the Jolt, although considering how much damage you are doing from your melee itself and the damaging aftershock, it's incredibly rare that your Jolt gets the final blow on your primary target anyway. This aspect also synergizes incredibly well with our second aspect, Flow State, which grants us the amplified buff when defeating jolted targets. And in addition to the base buffs granted by amplification, such as increased sprint speed, jump height, slide distance, and damage resistance while sprinting, we also gain an increase to our class ability regeneration rate, our damage resistance while dodging, and our weapon reload speed, all while amplified. This means that with just two abilities, one exotic and two aspects alone, we already have about 10 different buffs such as damage, damage resistance, invisibility, healing, speed, range, and so much more. And the crazy thing is we still have another two abilities, four fragments, 15 mods, and an infinite heavy ammo trick to add into the mix. Let's start with those four fragments first, beginning with the Spark of Resistance, which grants a 25% damage resistance buff whenever you are within 15 meters of three or more enemies. This buff not only makes us even harder to kill, but also makes it a whole lot safer to take advantage of our second fragment, the Spark of Feedback, which grants us a 75% melee damage buff for five seconds any time we receive melee damage from an enemy. This buff, of course, stacks with combination blow as well. And before we touch on our other two fragments, I want to first talk about the ability that they will be directly benefiting, the Pulse Grenade. This is by far the best arc PvE grenade in the game at the base level when put head-to-head -head against other options, and with an absolutely overpowered mod setup that we will get to in a second, you'll be throwing them literally every five seconds. You'll also receive some additional buffs to these pulse grenades from our remaining fragments as well, beginning with the Spark of Magnitude, which increases the total pulse count of the pulse grenade from 6 to 8, essentially increasing the duration of the grenade by 33%. And if that wasn't enough, our final fragment, the Spark of Shock, grants our grenades the ability to apply Jolt to targets, which not only increases the overall damage from our grenades, but also gives us a second method to defeat jolted targets and thus acquire the amplified buff to gain seven different benefits from the flow state aspect. And we're not done yet, because there is one truly incredible trick that I need to teach you regarding our super gathering storm. As you know, all melee and finisher final blows with a charged melee or while in possession of the combination blow buff will be granting us invisibility. But the really cool thing about invisibility is that it has a hidden little mechanic that I like to call the grace period, which is an approximately one second period directly after going invisible in which you can do absolutely anything without being pulled out of invisibility. One of the key things you can take advantage of with this trick is being able to throw your Gathering Storm Super without putting yourself in any danger whatsoever by getting a melee kill and then immediately hitting the super button to animation cancel the end of the melee and fire off your arc spear while still in the grace period. Although this is unnecessary in a lot of circumstances, harder activities like Grandmaster Nightfalls, where you'll want to be invisible as much as possible, will see this trick come in as a real favor to your survival potential. Another massive favor to your survival potential would be to subscribe to my channel if you've learned anything new in this video so far, 
whatsoever. So I can continue to teach you every fine detail about all of the best builds in Destiny. Continuing with this build, our lovely mod setup begins with three mods that will grant us a whole lot of ability regeneration when dodging. Beginning with Dynamo on the helmet for super energy when done near enemies, distribution on the class item for a refund to all three base abilities when done near enemies, and finally two copies of Bomber on the class item for a big refund to grenade energy when dodging in any context. Next up is Heavy Handed on our gloves to generate orbs of power on powered melee final blows, which alone will result in over 200 orbs created per activity. Picking up these orbs will grant a whole lot of benefits thanks to our two copies of Absolution on the boots for a refund to all three abilities and a copy of Innervation for a refund to grenade energy specifically. We'll also gain armor charge stacks from picking up these orbs to fuel the emergency reinforcement mod on our chest for a big damage resistance buff whenever our shields are broken in exchange for three armor charge stacks. And to top it all off, since we'll of course be meleeing everything, we will want two copies of impact induction on our gloves for a big refund to our grenade whenever dealing melee damage, and hands-on on our helmet for bonus super energy gains on melee final blows. You'll then round out this core mod setup with powerful friends on the helmet, resists and reserves on the chest, and stat mods on all five pieces wherever applicable. This suite of mods is what will have you throwing grenades and supers every 5 and 25 seconds respect thanks to all of the grenade energy from impact induction, absolution, innervation, distribution, and bomber, and thanks to all of the super energy from hands-on and dynamo. Couple all of this with stat prioritizations of resilience, intellect, and mobility, and you'll be borderline unstoppable. And before we get to our weapon selections and that infinite heavy ammo trick, I first want to let you know that there is a Destiny item manager link in the description down below that you can use to copy all of these abilities, aspects, fragments, and mods over to your guardian with just one click. Now, that infinite heavy trick that I keep mentioning is actually contingent on our weapon selection, so we must first discuss that in order for you to understand how to make heavy ammo bricks like Bungie makes questionable PvP decisions. Our first weapon selection in all cases will always be a shotgun with the 1-2 punch perk, which grants us a 100% melee damage buff and 150% melee damage buff to regular enemies and bosses respectively when landing all pellets of a shotgun shot. Specifically, we received this buff for 1.22 seconds, which is enough time for two melee hits, and both stacks with our combination blow, and buffs the damage of our lethal current aftershock. You'll also want to have your key binds or controller binds on auto melee while using this setup. As far as your other perk on the shotgun, I personally love Sir plus for increased handling, reload speed, and range for each fully charged ability since you typically always have at least two out of three at all times, although options like slide shot and auto loading holster can work perfectly fine as well. All together with your one-two punch, combination blow times three, and spark of feedback buffs, this makes for a total 1,333% increased melee damage buff. Now, I do want to mention Liar's Handshake for a brief moment since I'm sure some might be wondering if trading the survivability from Assassin's Cowl for more damage with Liar's Handshake is worth it. And my answer would be no. This is primarily due to the fact that although Cross Counter, Liar's Handshake's exotic perk, grants a 200% melee damage increase, this buff actually drops down to 80% specifically when paired with 1-2 Punch, meaning the overall DPS buff that you get for taking Liars over Cowl is actually quite minimal and certainly not worth giving up permanent invisibility and full HP heals, especially considering that even without Liar's Handshake, you'll be killing every non-boss enemy 
in one or two hits. Now, because you are killing every single enemy with your melee ability, you don't really need a primary weapon, making other special weapons like Arbalist, Wither Horde, Trace Rifles, or an auto-loading Waveframe Grenade Launcher great pairings with your one-two punch shotgun. And it is this very double special weapon setup that will enable us to generate ludicrous amounts of heavy ammo bricks. In Destiny, when you are running two special weapons, for whatever reason, your heavy ammo drop rates skyrocket whenever you kill enemies while holding a special weapon, and vice versa for special ammo drops while holding a heavy weapon. But the key thing to note here is that the enemies simply need to be killed while you are holding that weapon, not necessarily be killed with that weapon itself. Which means while we kill literally everything with our melees, we will still be generating a ton of special and heavy ammo bricks depending on what weapon is currently in our hands. Arc Hunter is by far one of the most enjoyable builds in the entire game in my personal opinion, and I hope you enjoy using it as much as you enjoyed this video. Feel free to stop by my live stream with additional questions. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.